from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of the VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Just had Rob Dinkovich from the New England Patriots on the program, and Happy to bring on the program one of the co-leaders of this VTUG event, Chris Williams, uh, whose day job is as a cloud architect with Green Pages, but is co-leader here at uh, VTUG, uh, does some uh, user groups uh, and uh, many other things, uh, and actually a uh, Cube alum even. Uh, back uh, four years ago, the first year uh, that right. we did this, uh, we had you on the program, but uh, Few things have changed, uh, you know. Uh, maybe I have a little, a little less little hair, longer, a more gray hair, hair yeah. uh, things like that. We were Funny talking, uh, you know. Rob was, you know, talking about how he's 35, and we were like, yeah, yeah, 35. Oh. I remember 35. <laughs> uh, <laughs> things like that. Just wait till you hit your 40s and stuff starts breaking. Oh, so <laughs> uh, look forward to. So, uh, uh, Chris, first of all, uh, thank you. Uh, the, you know, I, I, we love coming to an event like this. I got to talk to a few users on air, and I talked to, you know, get a just great pulse of what's going on in the industry virtualization, cloud computing, and beyond. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we know these, you know, local events are done, you know, a lot of it is the passion of the people that do it, and uh, therefore, we, we know a lot goes awesome. into it. I appreciate it, thanks for having me on. All right, so uh, bring people up to speed, you know, what, what's, what's, what's your life like today? What, what, what do you do for work? What do you do for, uh, you know, the, the, the passion projects? Uh, so, so the passion projects recently have been a lot of, um, we're doing a Python for DevOps series on V Brown Bag. Um, for the AWS Portsmouth user group, we're also doing a machine learning and robotics uh, autonomous car driving project using Python as well. Um, and for VTUG, we're, we're looking at a couple of different tracks, also with the autonomous driving and some more of the traditional like VMware to CAS cloud hybrid training kind of things. Excellent, so in the near future, the robots will be replacing the users here. And we'll I have, have my Skynet t-shirt on underneath here. Uh, <laughs> yes, Skynet. Uh, you, you know if you tweet that out of anything about Skynet, there's bots that respond to you with like things from the Terminator movies. I, um, built, I built one of them. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. They always make me laugh. And if there's not a place for snark on Twitter, then you know all we have left is kind of horrible politics. So uh, That's true, that's true. <laughs> um, great, so. Um, yeah, I mean, cloud, AI, robotics. Um, you know, what, what, what's the pulse when you talk to users here? Uh, you know, this started out, you know, virtualization. There's lots of people that right. are, I'm rolling out my virtualization, I'm expanding what use cases I can use it on. Mm -hmm. um, I might be thinking about how cloud fits into that and looking at, you know, VMware and Amazon especially, or Microsoft, how all those fit together. You know, wh what are you hearing? What drives uh, some of those passion projects other than, you know, you're interested in them? Uh, so, um, a lot of what my passion projects are doing, it's, it's kind of a, a confluence of a couple of different events. I'm, I'm passionate about the things that I work on. Um, and when I, when I get into a room with customers or whatever like that, or, or, with, or with the end users, um, getting together and talking about you know, what's, what's the next step? So, so we as users, as, as a user group and as a community, we're here, we're here to learn about not just what today is hap what's happening today, but what's going to keep us relevant in the future? What are the new things coming down the pipe? Um, and a lot of that is bending towards the things that I'm interested in, fortuitously. Um, th learn, learning how to take my infrastructure knowledge and parlay that into a, a DevOps framework. Learning how to take Python and, and some of the stuff that I'm learning from the devs on the AWS side and, and teaching them the infrastructure stuff. So, so it's a, it's a bi-directional learning thing where we all come together to that magical DevOps unicorn in the middle that, that doesn't really exist. But. Yeah, and, and I, I tell you, we, we've had this conversation a few times here and many times over uh, the, the, the last few years especially, is that there's lots of opportunities to learn. <laughs> um, and, you Too know, many. is your job threatened? And the only reason your job should be threatened is if you think you can keep doing year after year what you were doing before, because chances are um, either you will be disrupted in the job, or if not, you know, the people you're working for might be disrupted um, because if they're not pushing you along uh, those tracks and the tools and the communities uh, to be able to learn stuff is I can learn stuff at a fraction of the cost in faster times. Yep. Um, might not learn as much, but I'm saying I can pick up new skills. I can start getting into cloud. You know, it's not a thousand dollars and six months uh, to get the first piece of it. It exactly. might be 40 to 60 hours online yep. and, you know, cost you 30 to 100 bucks. Yeah, uh, so the, it's the really lift 
Merchant cool. training is a lot easier to, because you're basically swiping a credit card. And, and with AWS, you have a free tier for 12 months that you can play with and, and just you know, doodle around and, and, and figure things out. You don't have to buy a home lab. You don't have to buy NFR license or get NFR licenses from VMware. Um, the, but the, the catch to that is you do have to do it. Um, there, there's, there's a, um, remember, remember um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Of course. Remember that dad was doing the toothpaste tubes, he was the guy screwing the toothpaste tubes onto the machines? Yeah. At the end of the story, he, was, he got you know, automated out of a job because they had a machine screwing the toothpaste tubes on, and then at the end, he was the guy fixing the machine that was screwing the toothpaste tubes on. Right. So in, in our world, that infrastructure guy who's been deploying manually virtual machines, there's a, there's a piece of code, there's an infrastructure as code that will do that for them now. They've got to know how to modify and refactor that piece of code and get good, and get good at that. Yeah, um, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of people, we talk about, you know, there's big, you know, vendor shows, and yep. then there's, you know, regional user groups and meetups and the like. Give us a little insight into, you know, let's start with VTUG specifically, mm -hmm. and, you know, what you're doing up in the Portland area. We'd love to hear some of the dynamics now. Um, you know, it, you know, it feels like there's just been a groundswell for many years now to, to drive those, you know, local uh, and many times more specialized events as opposed to bigger, broader events. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because we, we like the bigger, broader events because it gets everybody together to talk about things across a broad spectrum. So here we have the infrastructure guys and we have the, the DevOps guys and we have a couple of developers and stuff like that. Um, and so getting that, that group think that mind share into one room together um, gets everybody's creative juices flowing. So, so people are starting to learn from each other. The, the devs are getting some ideas about how infrastructure works. The infrastructure guys are getting some ideas about you know, how, how, to, how to automate a, a certain piece of their job to, to make that you know, minimize, maximize a thousand times you know, go away. Um, so I, I, love, I love the larger groups because of that. The smaller groups are more, more specialized, more niche. So like when you, when you get into a smaller version, then, then it's mostly infrastructure guys or mostly devs or, or, or some mixture thereof. So they, they both definitely have their place and, and that's why I love doing both of them. Yeah, and uh, you know, what can you share? Kind of speeds and feeds of this show here. I, I know it's usually over a thousand people. Yep. Uh, you know, had you know a bunch of keynotes uh, going on. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Patriots and uh, and you know quite a number of uh, you know technology companies, mm -hmm. uh, people that are the kind of SIs or VARs uh, mm -hmm. in, in the mix. Uh, yeah. So so we had um, I think thirty five <laughs> sponsors. Um, we had six different keynotes or six general sessions. Um, we, we talked about everything from Azure to AWS to, to VMware. Uh, we, we covered the gamut of, of the things that the users are interested you in. You had, don't, don't undersell the general sessions there. There was <laughs> one that was on like, you know, blockchain and quantum computing I heard. Yep, yep. Um, there was you know, an Amazon session that was just geeking out on the database stuff, I think, there. Yes, so, yeah, I mean, yep. you know, it's not just, you know, marketing slide were up there. I saw a bunch of code in many of the sessions. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, this, this definitely is, uh, it, you know, I, I was talking with the Amazon uh, uh, um, uh, Randall earlier uh, here on the program and said that. The Amazon Randall. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sorry, Randall, Randall from Amazon He's here. a very large one. Getting at the end of the day, I've done a few of these, <laughs> um, but, uh, um, you know, I remember like four years ago, the first like Cloud 101 session here, yeah, yep. and I was like, you know, I probably could have given that session, right. but everybody here was like, oh my gosh, you know, I just, you know, yeah. I just found out about, about electricity, right. you know, that this is amazing. And today, most people understand a little bit more. Uh, we've, we've gotten the 101, so, you know, I'm, I'm getting into more of the pieces of it. But. Yeah, it was, it was really gratifying because the one that he gave was all of the service, all of the new services, it, of which there were like more than 100 yeah. in 50 minutes or less. And he <laughs> talks really, really fast. Yeah. And everybody was riveted. Uh, we, I mean, pe people were coming in even up into the, into the last minute and, and they all got it. There, there, it, wasn't, it wasn't like, what am I, do what am I going to do with this? It's this is what I need to know and this is valuable information. Yeah, uh, we were having a lunch conversation about like when you listen to a podcast, what speed do you listen on? So I tend to listen at about one and a half speed normally. Yep. Um, you know, Frapp was saying he listens at 2x normally. Does he really? uh, somebody like, 
like Randall, I think I would put the video up and you can actually go into YouTube and things like that and adjust the speed settings. I might hit put it to him down to 0.75 or uh, something yeah, like absolutely. that because absolutely, <laughs> you know, otherwise uh, you can listen to it at full speed and just like pause and rewind and things like that. But uh, <laughs> definitely uh, someone, uh, I respect that. I'm from New Jersey originally. I tend to talk a little faster on camera. I try to keep a steady pace so that people can keep up with uh, my I, excitement. I, I speed up too. He actually does this every day. He yeah. flies to a new city, does it once a day. So he's he's gotten that this is this is like rapid fire now. All right, want to give you the final word, uh, you know, VTUG, uh, you know, I think people that don't know it, you go to VTUG.com, a big winter warmer here. There's yes. the big summer uh, one with the, the, the world famous, uh, you know, lobster bake uh, fest there. I've been to that one a few times. It, I know people that fly from other countries uh, to come to that one. Uh, what, what else should we know about? So um, uh, we're about to revamp the website. Uh, we've, we've got some new interesting stuff coming up on there. Um, now that uh, we also have our Slack channel, everybody communicates on the, on the back end through that. Um, we're we're going to start having some uh, user content for the website so people can start posting um, blog articles and, and things of that nature there. I'm going to start doing like a little AW, like learn AWS on the, on the VTUG blog so, so people can start you know, ramping up on some of the basics and everything. And, and if, if that gains traction, then we'll maybe get into some more advanced topics from Azure and AWS and, and uh, v VMware, of course. VMware is always going to be there. That's, that's uh, some of the stuff that Cody is doing, Cody Darkland is doing over at VMware, like the CAS stuff, where it's the shim layer and the management of all of the different clouds. That's some really, really cool stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to showcase some of that on the, on the website. All right, well, Chris Williams, really appreciate you coming. Uh, and uh, as always, appreciate the, the partnership with the VTUG uh, to have us here. Thanks for having me. All right, and uh, th thank you as always for watching. We always love to bring you the best community content. We go out to all the shows, help extract the signal for the noise. I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching theCUBE.